Oh, hey, do you want to know what forces make the Batmobile go super fast? You mean besides its turbo boosted engine? Well, let's find out. What's going on, everybody? I'm Josh. And I'm Caleb. We've also got with us today the back computer, Penny One. Greetings. And welcome to Batman Science Lab. That's right, the place where we study the science behind all of Batman's really cool crime-fighting technology. We've been learning all about his tech. As members of the Night Watch, Penny One's new program where people like you and me from all over the world Get to hone your own skills to be everyday heroes. That's right. Now, when we talk about technology, we're not only talking about the really cool, fun, fancy gadgets on Batman. No, no, we're talking about other things, too, like his vehicles. That's right. I'm talking about the one, the only, the Batmobile! <laughs> oh, hey, I, I think Penny One has a call. Uh, let's see who it is. Hello? Hey, guys. Penny One tells me you guys are talking about the Batmobile. Oh, ho, ho, what's up, Brian? For those of you that don't know, this is Brian, the director of Diecast Vehicle Design with Hot Wheels. He's here to talk to us today. What's going on, man? Thanks, Josh. And the Batmobile is one of my favorite cars. Mine, too. In fact, Penny One was just telling me that it has ejector seats a grapnel hook, and rocket boosters. The Batmobile is very, very fast. My estimates calculate that the car can get up to around 310 miles per hour. Wow, that's super duper fast. But I mean, let's be honest, do we know how it can get that fast? I think those rocket boosters and the 12 cylinder engine help. Oh yeah, but the rocket boosters and the engines are just a couple of the dozens of things that factor into the speed and maneuverability of the Batmobile. There's tons of forces that Batman has to take into account when he's driving his crime fighting vehicles. Like what? Well, let's think about that. So there's this thing called momentum, right? And momentum is just a property of motion that makes an object move. So in other words, how far an object can go until it completely stops, all right? Now, momentum is comprised of two different parts. You have mass and you have velocity. Now, velocity is just a fancier way of saying how fast an object can go in a given direction. Okay, now there are many, many different types of factors that can affect an object's momentum, like a car, for example. Now, Caleb, let me ask you this. Do you think that the weight of an object affects its momentum? I'm not sure, but it sounds reasonable. That's a great, great answer. That's right, we're gonna test that out right now with our little fun experiment that we're gonna do. Another force that can impact an object's momentum is air. Really? But air is so... <laughs> invisible. You know, you're not wrong about that, but think about it this way, okay? You know, like on a very windy day, you suddenly feel the air like pressing against you? Now, let's pretend we're an object heading super duper fast in one direction, and all of these air molecules are right in our way, pressing against us. It causes a resistance, an air resistance. Gotcha, and can that force slow you down? It can, but it depends on the shape and the surface area of the object, or in this case, the vehicle. Exactly. Now, we're gonna also gonna experience that again with the trek that we're gonna do it. And I'm, I'm just so excited to get started on this. What do you say, let's do it? Let's do it. All right. Have fun, guys. And I'll check back in with you guys later to see what you find. See you, Brian. So for our first experiment, let's take a look at momentum. What we have here are two identical Batmobiles. The only difference is we've made this one a little heavier than this one. Keeping in mind what we know about the law of momentum, we're gonna see which car goes the farthest, fastest. All right, so Caleb, what do you think's gonna happen? Well, I think with the car with the weights is heavier, it would go slower and have less momentum, or it would not go as far as the lighter Batmobile. But let's find out. You're right, it sounds like you're ready, Mr. Referee. Yep, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bravest, the boldest Batmobile showdown in Gotham City history. All right. Today, we see which one of these machines has more momentum to go the fastest and farthest distance. Are you ready? We are ready, Mr. Referee. On your marks, get set, go! Here we go! Whoa! Whoa! So weight totally plays a part in momentum, but not the way I expected. The heavier Batmobile definitely took longer to pick up speed, 
Well, I thought it would stop sooner, when actually it went further for longer. I know, isn't that crazy? Remember, it's heavier, so weight means more mass. And remember, momentum is mass times velocity, okay? So the heavier an object is, the more momentum it has because it has that much more energy to move forward. So that means Batman should make his Batmobile really heavy. Right? Well, let's pump the brakes there for a quick second. Now, remember how this bad boy had a hard time starting? Mm -hmm. It's going to be heavier, so it's going to have a hard time stopping. The heavier an object is, the harder it is to stop, even with Batman's advanced braking system. Gotcha. So Batman really needs to make sure that the Batmobile has the right weight for its size, so that it can take advantage of natural momentum, but can also be stopped easily. I couldn't have said it better myself, Caleb. Well said. But. Remember that force we talked about earlier that should help the Batmobile stop? Air resistance. Exactly, so let's put that to the test next. All right, let's do it. Yeah. All right, well, as you can see, we added something a little different to our track. We've created our own wind track so that the fan is gonna create even wind for both tracks. Now, remember we were talking about how wind resistance is gonna affect different surface areas? Yeah. Well, we have two very differently shaped cars, okay? We have the low, sleek Batmobile and the nice boxy armored car. If you think about how the wind is gonna hit both of these cars, what do you think the results are gonna be? Well, I think since the Batmobile has a lot less surface area than the truck, the air won't show much resistance, but the truck is heavier. And so, like we learned from the last test, it might still win because it can have more momentum once it gets going. You know, Mr. Referee, you make a really good point. Can momentum outweigh air resistance? Only one way to find out. It's racing time! Here we go. Woo, that's powerful! On your marks, get set, go! What? I said, go! Oh! Whoa! Whoa. All right, let's talk about it. All righty, Caleb, what did we just see? Well, we just saw that both cars started really fast, mm -hmm. but the Batmobile pulled out in front of the truck. Yeah, very excellent observation. They both started at the same time. There was mm -hmm. no weight on either one, right? We mm -hmm. saw that. But the problem is the truck, a lot boxier, had yeah. more surface area. So because it had more area for the wind to push back, it slowed down quicker, mm -hmm. and it was harder for it to catch a speed right toward the end. Whereas the Batmobile lowered the ground, a lot more aerodynamic, cut right through the wind like no problem. Yeah, so in simpler explanation, Batmobile went down the track like this. <gasps> the truck. Caleb, you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that so much fun? Yeah, that was awesome. They're like yeah, down the track. I never expected that. No, it was so much fun to see everything just happen in real life. Yeah, and the fan was so refreshing. It was very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, what's up, Brian? Hey. Hey, guys. So how did your experiments go? Well, on the first experiment, we played around with momentum. So we had a heavy Batmobile and a light Batmobile. Oh, that's so cool. The heavier Batmobile definitely took longer to pick up speed, but in the end, it went farther. So it went further for longer. Exactly, and on the second one, we played around with aerodynamics a bit. We had a boxier one versus the nice aerodynamic Batmobile. We figured out that the boxier one slowed down way quicker than the Batmobile itself. Yeah, so when people like me are designing a sports car to go fast, which design do you think we're gonna use? The uh, sleek or the boxy? Definitely the Lorimer aerodynamic design, which is exactly what Batman did so that the Batmobile is primed and ready for action. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Brian, I think this kid's ready for the real Batmobile. <laughs> so, what did we learn today? That both weight and air resistance have huge effects on the momentum of moving objects. And each of Batman's Batmobiles take advantage of those forces in different ways. You got it. Hey, you should get a job designing Batman's Batmobiles. If he ever wants to have a race with them, I'll be the first to volunteer. Oh, yeah, me too. Well, great job today, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Keep up the good work, OK? All right, thanks, Brian. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us here on Batman Science Lab. If you want more cool Batman content, you can stay here on the DC Kids channel. Let's see how wind resistant I am. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.